Hi everyone and welcome to this week's EBC video. We're in Wisconsin Dells this week, outside of Ripley's Believe It or Not, because we're gonna be looking at John 8, verses 31 through 35, and thinking about truth. And I thought, what better place to be thinking about truth than outside of Ripley's Believe It or Not? It's a little noisy on the road here. We're gonna do the best we can. And we're gonna do one other thing for you real quick. We're gonna turn around a little bit and get a much better fall view in Wisconsin Dells than the side of this building here. All right, so now, now we're gonna talk a little bit about John 8 verses 31 through 36. I just wanna start by telling you what's happening at the beginning of this and as we lead into these verses, Jesus is actually talking to the Pharisees and he's telling the Pharisees that he is the light of the world and whoever believes in him will not walk in darkness but will have the light of life. Now this bothers the Pharisees a lot because they're concerned that, hey, he's talking about himself here. Uh, he's not telling the truth. And Jesus says, no, no, I am telling the truth. And there's this great debate that goes back and forth about the truth of God and the truth of Jesus. And then the Bible shifts focus a little bit and Jesus shifts his focus to the people other than the Pharisees, the people that believe Jesus, all right? And these are the verses that we're gonna start out here now because when Jesus addresses the people who believed him, he says that if you are truly my disciples and you keep my word, you will see the truth and the truth will set you free. Now this is a pretty well-known Bible passage and I would say actually that in popular culture, this has sort of taken on a life of its own a little bit, right? That last phrase of it really gets repeated a lot, that the truth will set you free. Sometimes, that's really referred to, we sort of picture this trial that's happening or a justice system in which there's testimony and the truth comes out and someone is found innocent and they're free because of it, right? Uh, or we, we think about it in terms of somebody having a secret, something that they'd like to confess, and the answer is it's sort of eating them up inside, and then when they finally tell everyone, now they don't have to worry about it anymore, and it's okay, right? Sort of that the truth will set you free, right? But actually, I don't think Jesus is talking about either of those things in this particular passage here, because the crowd asks him, that, what are you talking about here setting us free? We've never been slaves to anyone. And Jesus responds and he says, look, anyone who commits sin is a slave to sin. So let's think about what that means for a moment, that how would it be that being Jesus' disciple, believing in Jesus would set you free from sin, All right? And I wanna do it by thinking about it the opposite way for a moment. What would our lives look like if we didn't have the grace of Jesus saving us from our sins? So imagine your best day last week. Imagine when you got up and all the things you did and whether or not you can say to yourself that you definitely didn't sin that day. And you know, if you're being honest with yourself, you're not going to find a day where you didn't sin at all, right? Okay, so you go to bed that night and you're like, uh, well, how'd I do? Well, I did pretty good. I feel pretty good about myself, but actually I probably didn't earn, uh, I probably didn't deserve Jesus' love from that, right? So now we know that that's gonna be, that's gonna be an issue. And, and that day then, that day goes in the L column, right? And then the next day happens, and the next day happens, and you've got an L on every one of those days, right? Because you're trying to keep score. Well, by being set free, it means you are no longer keeping score, and it means that you're free to do a couple other things too. You're free, first of all, to see Jesus' love. So that's number one, right? You're free for that. But then you're also free to actually show Jesus' love. You're no longer earning Jesus' love, but you're just demonstrating that Jesus loves you, right? So in that instance, instead of worrying about sin, instead of worrying about the scorecard, because there is no more scorecard, you're just able to do the things that God has for you to do. All right, so everybody, this week, be confident that you are not a slave to sin, that you will sin, and that it's okay. Because by believing in Jesus and receiving his grace, you are free to do great things with and for God. Have a great week, everybody.